So this EV, we are using it for small driving. We don't use it for uh, long distance. We use it for shopping. We use it for going to the doctor or for, you know, some errands or school, stuff like that. So a normal trip in this car is like an hour each way. So two hours, maybe three. And that will drain the battery to about from 100 to about 50% if it's three hours. If it's a shorter trip, uh, then obviously less. So maybe a 60 down to 60, something like that. That is a very normal number for us to discharge the battery. So then I'll just show you the charger that we have. Uh, we have an alpha charger, but you can use any charger you want, even with, uh, you know, with different kinds of solar systems. So this is a three phase alpha charger. Um, it can also be connected on single phase, then it only uses one of the phases. It's very easy. It's a little bit dirty, but okay. So the way that it works, uh, I guess many of you know, but you take this out, put it in the car, then you have a card here that you swipe, and then uh, charging will start. The important thing is that you stop charging yourself in the car if you want to stop charging before 100%. You can't just take this out because it's a lot of power, you know. So when this is in the car, that's really important that you don't just jerk it out. Other than that, it's very easy and simple. So the way that you can think is that this charger, it uh, charges maximum 11 kilowatt, 11,000 watts. So that's 11 kilowatt hours in one hour. But it doesn't go to the max all the time, so it's easier to say 10 because when it's starting up, it's a little bit slower and some other factors that can affect it. So if you say 10 kilowatt, then that's you know usually where you know close to where it is. So that means that in one hour it has charged 10 kilowatt hours approximately, but less at the end. So there are some factors like that. So at the end of the charge, it will be slower. Um, so that means if we are at 60% and we need to charge it up, we have to have it in, in the charging for about three, four hours. But obviously we don't have to do that in one go. Uh, we can do a little bit uh, one day and a little bit the other day. If the trip is in the morning, come back around 12, you can charge it for four hours and only between three and four, you're gonna use a little bit of grid to supplement and you're gonna be fine, you don't have to do. And then four hours, it, it's usually full. But if you want to charge from solar the way that we are, obviously you have to adjust the charging after what your solar is able to produce. If not, it's just going to be using the grid a lot. We have a 40 kilowatt system now, so there's a lot of power. But still, we have uh, you know so many rooms and kids and air conditioning and, and pool and everything. So <clears throat> we use a lot of electricity even when we're not charging the car. We have to look at uh, what we are doing in the house and the weather, and then we make a decision if we're gonna charge the car or not. So let's say all the workers are here and it's a cloudy day, then we will say we're not gonna charge the car just because there's not gonna be enough power available. We could if, we, if it was urgent, uh, and then we would be using the grid, but most of the time it's not urgent to charge this car. So then we just wait for the next day <clears throat> when it's more sun or less people. So that, that's the way we do it. And that works really, really good for this kind of car, this kind of activity. For long distance driving, it changes completely. So when you use the DC chargers in gas stations and stuff, you pay about usually like seven baht per kilowatt hour, that's a normal price. And then you just multiply that by the tank, <laughs> so to speak. 
the battery size and then you see what you have to pay for it. It's not much. It's uh, much, much cheaper than gas. So, but obviously you have to be sure that you get to the charge, uh, chargers. So the way to understand it in terms of solar power is that if you have an oversized 10 kilowatt system on a sunny day, that system will often be producing 9, 10 kilowatt. So when you're charging this car, it's equivalent to a 10 kilowatt system with oversizing. So that's, that's a pretty good way of thinking about it. Now, if you're on single phase, you don't want to be charging max because single phase has maximum 7 kilowatt uh, charging and um, a single phase system usually cannot uh, give you 7 kilowatt. Uh, there are some inverters that uh, can, but um, most people on single phase, they have 5 kilowatt inverters. So if you have that, just remember you have to reduce the amount of uh, charging. And you can do that in the app on most chargers. Not all, but most. So that will usually be an amp. So you just have to reduce the amp. The easiest is to think percentage. So if you re reduce it by about 50%, you're going to be at you know, about 3-4 kilowatt. And that's a good uh, that's a good level for a five kilowatt system. Obviously, depending on what you are doing else, elsewhere in the house. For battery systems, the uh, way that I recommend it is to charge the batteries in the morning, and then you have uh, a lot of power available in the afternoon. Hopefully, if not, you can expand the system so that you do have available capacity after charging the batteries uh, and then you have uh, you can charge in the afternoon so that's that's the that's the way to do it and even battery systems you can attach systems like inverters that uh, are cheaper you don't have to double up with uh, let's say you have a smile 5 alpha and you need more power on single phase you don't have to get another Smile 5, you can have a normal inverter that just feeds the Smile with uh, power. The difference is that for power caps, you cannot use that power to the same degree. For that, you need uh, another Smile 5. But for charging the bat, you could uh, no problem use an extra inverter, just like I described. Uh, we call, that's called hybrid coupling. That's the technical uh, description. And you can do that on many different uh, systems, alpha included. It, it really is uh, the ultimate uh, freedom. Uh, when you have free electricity and free car. You, and that's not a joke. Well, yes, you have to buy the infrastructure. But, I mean, once you have that, uh, everything is free. Like, uh, we, we pay... Maybe 1500 for electricity. If we didn't have solar, we would be paying 15000 you know, between 13 and 15000 Now, the absolute best way to charge uh, these kind of cars is, with the so is at home and not on the DC chargers, and especially from solar, of course, free. But uh, compared to the fast chargers, um, that slowly degrade the battery. And this kind of slow charging is uh, really optimal. And uh, you can charge all the way up to 100%. You don't have to think about anything like stop before or something like that. You just go. Um, that kind of stop before 100%, that was more common with NMC batteries that were you know, a few years ago. There are maybe some manufacturers that still use them. But most use LFP, and with good reason. It's much safer, easier to handle. So, if you're ever buying an EV, just make sure you have LFP battery. So, to conclude, it's no problem at all to use an EV for free with solar power. You just have to make sure you have enough solar, 
and make that initial investment after that is free, like like we are doing here. So it's and there are many people who are doing like this. It's uh, not like this is something exotic anymore. It's very normal and easy, and you just have to make a plan how much you are driving, how often. Make sure that you have uh, some space in the daytime for charging.